Good morning from St Thomas's in Wednesfield on this very strange Mothering Sunday morning. I hope that being able to at least see and hear some worship in this wonderful place will help you through today and through this time. During this service, then, we'll be lighting a candle. If you can safely light a candle, then you may want to have one ready, perhaps to pause this for now, while you get yourself prepared. You'll find the words of the service are on our church website, at wednesfieldteam.org.uk, and follow the links there to the coronavirus page and the worship resources. If you want to find those, then please do, and then we'll begin. Just a warning, during this service I will be singing, not as a performance, but in the hope that some of you might join in with at least the words that you know, and again they are available on that um, sheet. If you don't want to join in, then please do feel free to fast forward through my singing. But now let's be still and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We light this candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who've loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who've wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love. And for Mary, a reminder of your patient, waiting love. Blessed be God forever. Now we'll sing the first of the hymns for this morning. A traditional hymn for Mothering Sunday. Now thank we all our God.
The Old Testament reading for this morning is from the first book of Samuel. It's one of the traditional readings for Mothering Sunday. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 20. Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man, her husband Elkanah, and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you've weaned him, only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. When she'd weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is given to the Lord. She left him there for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We keep a moment's quiet to let God's word sink into our hearts. In the collect, the prayer set for Mothering Sunday by the church, let's pray. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This Mothering Sunday is a strange and difficult one, especially for moms and families who are separated, isolated, and can't get together to celebrate as you normally would. Now I know that it doesn't take away any of the pain of being apart, but please never forget that love unites us, even when viruses and closed front doors come between us physically. That's what Hannah from that reading found her prayers offered over the years were answered when, after so many years of longing and hoping and almost despairing, she was blessed with the son for whom she'd prayed when she went to the temple, the house of God, the year before our reading. She was granted a son, Samuel. And when he was old enough, then she took him to the, the tabernacle to live, learn, and serve God. She visited him regularly, but she knew that even when they were apart, they were united in God's love and in their own, and they were held together by having a part in God's often mysterious story. And in time, Samuel, her son, grew to become one of the greatest leaders of the nation of Israel. Now today, if you can't be with those that you love physically, it is of course much easier than it was for Hannah and for Samuel to keep in touch. If you can do nothing else today, then please telephone or video call those who you love. Don't just text, don't just message. And concentrate on your time with them, even while you're apart. Don't have the television off in the background unless you're watching and talking about the same thing. Focus on each other and on the love that unites you, 
across whatever distance it may be. And it might be that you can agree with those you love to do some simple action at the same time today. On this Mothering Sunday, the leaders of Churches Together, that brings together almost all the Christian churches in the country, have asked Christians to light a candle in their window at seven o'clock this evening and together to pray for our nation and for those who are suffering and those fighting this pandemic. It might help to know that someone you love is doing the same thing at the same time, so why not coordinate with them? I'll be ringing the church bell at seven o'clock as a reminder to the nation to pray. But through it all, whatever you do, remember that we are part of one family, loved by one heavenly Father who holds us all together. I'm going to read some words from the New Testament now, our second reading. And they're words that, again, I think we need to hear at this time. St. Paul is writing to the whole Christian family, but in particular to the Christian family of the Colossians. And it's from that letter, Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 12, that I'm going to read. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, let's keep a moment of quiet and let God's word sink into our hearts. At the moment, we're probably more aware than usual of the depth of our need for that love of which St. Paul wrote. Not just God's love for us, but also the human love through which most of the time we know God's love. Over the coming weeks, some of us are going to long for time with others, especially those who are having to self-isolate alone. And it's vital that we who can, for the moment at least, move around and be in touch, do all we can to support them. But others, especially families who are used to lives that take them out of the house most of the time, will probably have times of wishing that for a bit they could be alone. Paul's words about living together are wise. There'll be more, even more need than usual in crowded homes to bear with one another, to forgive, to discover new depths of compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience for those closest to us, as well as those from whom we're separated. Above all, says Paul, clothe yourselves with love. So please care for one another. And think of how you can support one another in your home. How you can make space for each other to be yourselves. To do the things you need to do. And to be mindful of the needs of others. And think too about how you, perhaps as a family, can best support those who are isolated near to you. 
And then Paul says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. So in these difficult times, forgive and be patient with one another. Even as Christ is forgiving and patient with you. He knows our anxieties. He knows our frustrations, our difficulties. It's important that we remember that all of us are tense and on edge. And we make space for one another. But then Paul says something that takes us beyond just trying to cope with this time. He takes us to commands and guidance that help us to live through it and grow. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So read the Bible. Take time to think and pray over its words and let God speak to you. If you don't have a good Bible at home, then if you're watching this online, there are plenty online that you can find. If you're at home and need a Bible, then please get in touch with the church and we'll bring a New Testament around and put it through you like the box. But read God's word. And take it to heart. And if you're not sure about what you, you're reading, again, message the church and we'll try and help you understand it. And then Paul says, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now do think about the neighbours before you start singing too loudly. But do sing on your own or together the words and the songs that uplift and strengthen you. Music and song are one of God's gifts to us to lift our hearts. So never mind how good or bad you think your voice is. Sing together to God's glory. And through it all pray. Pray for an end to this pandemic and for everyone who's caught up with it. But pray also for God's blessing on you, on those you love, and on those around you. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. In other words of the affirmation of faith, a simple affirmation that reminds us of our calling to live as God's family. And so if you have the words in front of you, then say them with me, or simply hear them and repeat them in your heart. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. And as we normally do in church, each time I say the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to join in answering here our prayer. And so we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, on this day, we give thanks for our mothers. And especially if we're separated from them, either because they are already separated from us by death, or because through this time, we're parted through isolation. We give you thanks. And in whatever way is right for us, in a moment's quiet, we pray for our own mothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for an end to the pandemic. We pray for those who are seeking to lead our nation. For those especially in the medical services. And here, we pray especially for the staff of the Royal Wolves Trust. For New Cross, our local hospital. And for all seeking to bring health and support to our community. We pray too for all those working frantically to find treatments and vaccines. 
bless their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for one another. In a moment of quiet, we picture those with whom perhaps today we would normally be at worship in church, and we ask God's blessing upon them in their homes or wherever they are. We pray for our families, our friends, our colleagues, our neighbours, and in quiet we picture some of them and ask God's blessing upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment's quiet, we hold before God our own prayers, our own concerns, thanks, anxieties and fears. And we open our hearts to him. We draw our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to sing again. It's a hymn which takes the words of Mary, as she celebrated in the knowledge that she was to have a son, and celebrated in the fact that God remains faithful through all things. Again, the words are on the um, service sheet. You can see them or join in if you know them. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Let's sing. over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. My sisters and brothers, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 
Amen.